What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Scales 13. In today's video, I'm going to be going over an update on what's been going on with Thunder for the past couple of months. So let's start off with the beginning of the story. So, in the beginning of the new year, I noticed that Thunder had a swollen toe. The last time Thunder had a swollen toe, it was because of a broken claw. Now, when he had this broken claw, the swelling on the toe was towards the distal end of the digit. This time, the swelling was on the knuckle. So, I did a little research and I went through my notes to try to figure out what was going on with him. And a few different things popped up. Possible causes that look similar to the pictures that I'm going to show you now were gout, MBD, and uh, stuck shed. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, no matter what's going on with Thunder, he has to go to the vet. Now, normally, I like to bring my animals to the vet around the beginning of the summer so the temperature is nice and warm outside for travel. But of course, this happened in January, and when you see an issue like this, you don't want to let it linger. So I took Thunder to the vet right away, and of course, did the proper heating procedures of my car and everything else in order to get him there. So Let's go past that for a second. So I get them into the vet and they go through their initial workup. The initial workup of Thunder came out looking very good. He was not dehydrated. His eyes were clear. His nostrils were clear. Epiglottis was clean. There was no obvious signs of disease. Skin coloration looked, looked good. And he didn't have any uh, obvious breaks or springs. So we can rule out the toe being broken at that point. So what they did was they did a few x-rays of his body to make sure that it wasn't anything broken, but also to see what else could possibly be going on there. Also, they did a fine needle aspirate of the knuckle to figure out what was going on inside of his foot, right? Well, upon looking at the fine needle aspirate, they found uric acid crystals when they looked at the sample under a microscope, which is consistent with gout. Now... This was quite alarming. So what of course we wanted to do is we wanted to get to the bottom of how Thunder could have gotten gout. So like I said, in the initial workup, Thunder was not dehydrated. So it couldn't have been an issue with moisture. Then we start going over things with diet. And the first question that I got was, well, how often are you feeding Thunder rodents? And I tell them, well, I feed Thunder on a 100% insect diet. He hasn't eaten rodents his entire life. I've never given him a single pinky, fuzzy, any type of rodents at all, right? So then we start going through the different insects and they're like, okay, what's your main staple feeder? My main staple feeder, of course, is doobie roaches. I feed Thunder other things, but that is about 90% of what he eats. And that's when we basically got the red flag. But of course, with doobie roaches being very high on the protein index, if you feed doobie roaches too frequently without switching out other foods and without varying the diet, what will happen is because doobie roaches are so high in protein and because they can store excess proteins in their bodies along with uric acid itself, that would get transferred directly to your animal's body and of course cause health problems like this. So of course we were very concerned. Um, they prescribed him allopurinol, which is being fed to him by mouth on a daily basis and he's getting 90 microliters of that. So at this point, the situation is looking pretty stressful, but a week later, I get the blood work. He didn't have any issues like elevated calcium levels, which of course would could be uh, could mean that he could also have cancer and things like that. So cancer was ruled out. And the only thing that looked strange but was consistent with the, the uric acid crystals that we saw in the fine needle aspirate was that his uric acid levels were slightly elevated per his body mass. But when we spoke about this, of course, this was a blood test I was taking before he was even on the medication. And what I was basically told at that point is, if Thunder can keep his uric acid levels, well, if I can ma manage to maintain Thunder's uric acid levels to be at a normal level where the uric acid levels aren't too high and the disease isn't physically progressing where you see other crystals popping out on the animal's body, then I may be able to wean him down to a lower dose and he might be one of those cases where he can actually survive having gout and live a longer lifespan. So that was the positive at that point. And so far, the past couple of months, I'm going to show you some other pictures of what the swelling looked like from the beginning. 
towards when I started dosing with the medication, the swelling has gone down consistently. So good news, it looks like, at least from a visual standpoint of the caregiving at home, that stomach is recovering. Now, what corrective actions am I making as far as making sure that Thunder is eating the proper diet? Well, number one is portion control. I'm making sure I'm not feeding him as many feeder insects as I was before, only because I want to make sure that he's not going to have too much of a high spike of his uric acid so that way he's not sitting in his blood too long. Now let's go over what gout actually is. So gout occurs when there is an issue with an animal consuming too much protein and the animal has excess purons floating around in the blood, right? Now it's up to the kidneys to filter the blood and excrete the uric acid from the animal's body into urates, which are passed through the animal's dung. So if you've ever seen a picture of a reptile's dung before, it's very similar to a bird's, where you see the brown part, which is the dung, and then you see a little white sac next to it. The little white sac is the urate, which is, of course, broken down uric acid. Now, when you have diseased kidneys, or if an animal is eating too much protein, or if an animal is consuming something that has uric acid in it, that is being transferred straight to the animal's body, or from the breakdown of the proteins, the uric acid is then building up within the animal's blood. And if the animal cannot expel the uric acid, the uric acid in the blood will sit in the joints, crystallize, and that's what forms gout crystals. Now, of course, there's two different forms of gout. You have visceral gout and you have articular gout. Now, what Thunder has at the moment is articular gout, which is only appearing in one joint. All the other scans of his body, all the x-rays and everything that they've done has shown that it only popped up in one spot so far. But if he had visceral gout, that's when the crystals are forming within the organs, which of course can be deadly for the animal that has this condition. Now, of course, the big question, how did I let this happen? Well, for many of you who may know, some of you know, some of you may not know, I actually work in a lab setting as a biologist, as a uh, biochemist. And lab work, of course, is very time consuming. A lot of times you're at work for 12 to 16 hours a day. That coupled with the issues that we've been having nationwide with supply chain, it's been difficult for me to get in all the different feeders that I want on time. So because of that, because doobie roaches were the easiest feeder for me to get, and because I already saw them as my staple feeder, I actually wound up feeding too many doobie roaches compared to varying a diet and mixing in different things. And of course, to make up for that, I started actually breeding my own insects. So I recently just started a mealworm colony, and of course, I was getting a doobie roach colony set up where I was getting doobie roaches rated at three. So that way I can feed them on whatever vegetable matter I want to give them to make sure that they're healthy for my reptiles. Unfortunately, right around the time when I first started getting my doobie roaches to breed and produce babies, soon after, Thunder started showing visible signs of gout, and that's when I had to take him to the vet, and that's when we got the diagnosis. So now let's talk about the adjustments that I've made to Thunder's diet. So the adjustments that I've made to Thunder's diet, at least at the moment, he's not eating any doobie roaches. Right now, he's eating mainly crickets and hornworms. The crickets, of course, are being gut loaded on a healthy, a healthy vegetable mix. And the hornworms are being fed because they are lower in protein and they're very high in moisture, which makes them easy to break down and, of course, keeps them hydrated. Also, although he wasn't dehydrated when he came in, in order to make sure that Thunder's kidneys aren't being stressed out from dehydration, I am keeping his humidity about 10 to 15% higher in the day. And of course at night, the humidity still spikes up to around 90, 95% to make sure that he is being hydrated throughout the night while he's sleeping, which of course happens on its own when the lights go out. So that's what I'm doing right now with Thunder. I will continue to update you with Thunder's progress and how he's doing. So let's all hope that Thunder can continue to be on the path of recovery. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Everyone have a great day. Peace.